It is better to call it as DLMS COSM as the first place because DLMS itself stands for a number of different things. DLMS COSM is a metering standard. It's a standard that's been designed specifically for communication with uh, energy meters. DLMS, the first part of the name itself uh, earlier was called as a distribution line message specification which was something that is used uh, for communication between electricity devices generally, any kind of electricity device. Later this was evolved into something called device language message specification which was more focused on metering. But DLMS COSM is still one more evolution away. DLMS COSM is probably the third evolution which has adapted some parts of DLMS and added a COSM layer which is an application layer for metering. In DLMS, one of the big advantages is that the DLMS model consisting of interface classes which is the structure for data and OBIS codes which is the naming for the data, both of these are unique and unambiguous in a worldwide manner. This is an advantage because a lot of the investment in an AMI system is basically into the effort that it takes to configure millions of meters into the system, configure all the data that is coming from that system and then produce reports based on that. Now if you need to scale this investment and you need to add more uh, meters at a later stage, it helps if all the meters have the same structure, the same model and the same naming convention. That way that investment in all that effort does not get wasted. That is one of the advantages. One more advantage that I think is very significant here is the separation between the application layer and the transport layers. The COSM layer, the application layer and the data model and naming on top of it is something that can stand forever. Because as communication technologies change, you may need to replace what you are using now and you may need to put in some other communication technology in the future. And every time this happens, we don't want to have to change everything that we have done at the application level. In this case, COSEM, the application layer, layer, is completely separated from the transport layers. So you can just plug in any communication technology that arrives in the future and may be better without any loss of the investment that you have done in the system. So this is another big advantage. The third aspect that I would like to talk about in this context is the fact that DLMS COSEM, unlike most other metering protocols, is not restricted only to power metering. The same structure, the same model and the same naming system and the same transport mechanism can be applied to other utility meters as well. For example, gas meters or water meters, heat meters, almost any kind of metering quantity can be accommodated and uh, served by this protocol standard, which is I think one of the unique aspects of DLMS COSEM. It all started with DLMS, the first DLMS that I talked about, that is a distribution line message specification. This is a this is an IEC standard. It is a so part number is 61334-4-41, which is a pretty old protocol standard. And this distribution line message specification was then evolved later into device language message specification with more focus on metering. And then an extension to this DLMS called you know, within DLMS COSM it is called as XDLMS, it's basically an extension of this DLMS was taken, extracted and uh, the COSM layer was added and all the objects, models and things that have come with COSM were added to that. So, I mean that is the evolution of DLMS COSM. As it stands today, DLMS COSM is not maintained by the IEC, it is maintained by the DLMS User Association. So, this is a body that has a liaison with the IEC and under the mandates of this liaison, they are the official body that can maintain the standard. That means they can make additions, they can make enhancements or corrections and continuously keep the standard up to date. Plus, they can act as the agency that registers uh, vendor meters and performs or issues the conformance certificates to those kind of vendor meters. So the DLMS UA is now the primary body that maintains the standard, registers vendors, or, uh, issues certificates Plus, periodically, whatever work they do in extending the standard gets back integrated back to the IEC. There is a subject which has caused a little confusion, at least in India. Uh, 
people have assumed that the LMS COSUM is 62056 and vice versa but that's not the case. IEC 62056 is a family of protocols. For example, the older Euridis protocol is a part of uh, 62056. The 61107 protocol has got a new avatar in under 62056. There's a protocol called Link Plus, which is also part of 62056. So there are several subparts within 62056, which are also related to metering, but have no relevance to DLMS cosine. DLMS cosine, you can say it's a subset. Uh, it is maintained by the DLMS UA in their own versions. They call them the colored books. But whenever it gets back integrated into IEC, it comes into a specific set of subparts. There is the part 53, which is the COSEM application layer. Then there are the part 61 and 62, which is for the interface classes and the OBIS codes. There is parts 46 and 47, which is for the data carriers. One is for serial ports and the other is for TCP IP links. There is a part 42, which is for the physical layer. And in this way, this set of specific subparts of 62056 is what is DLMS COSEM, but the entire 62056 has many other things which is not relevant. Metering initially was only around proprietary protocols and proprietary protocols were vendor specific. A vendor would design a meter and maybe a data collection system and he would provide a custom protocol which is not open. It is something that is locked to that vendor. And this continued for many years and to this day proprietary protocols still compete with DLMS. Now, there are still markets which go for proprietary protocols for very specific reasons. So that is one of the competing technologies which I think will slowly go away in the future as people start adopting more and more open protocols. One of the competing technologies would be the American standards, the ANSI standards. ANSI has a set of standards under C12.x, there's a specific number of subparts under that which is at an equivalent level of evolution and is a competing technology to be us. I think some of the advantages that I mentioned earlier is the USP for DLMS success. Uh, one of the things that I like about this is the separation between the application layer and the carrier layers. It's a way of future proofing the standard so that in the future nobody knows what communication technology will come up and what will become obsolete and the application layer remains as it is, which is a very important feature. It has a robust security features, probably one of the most well thought through security processes for a metering industry, for a metering protocol, I'm not talking about the IT systems, but for a metering protocol standard, it has probably one of the best uh, comprehensive security packages. It's a centralization or globalization, it's ability, the ability to have unambiguous data structures and object names which is maintained in a central location but can be enhanced in country specific derivatives. This is something we have done in India. We use the global DLMS but we have added our own uh, localized uh, data models. Maybe not so much as data models but at least our own locally named objects. DLMS provides for this uh, facility of uh, using a global standard but adapting it to country specific requirements this is something we have done in India. And that is, I think, also one of the big advantages compared to the other competing technologies. America would tend to follow their own national body. I mean, they have their own standards development organization, the ANSI, which is uh, quite popular. And it is quite expected that uh, the United States would follow ANSI standards. Uh, I think that's uh, the same case even here in India. Uh, we have the BIS, the Bureau of Indian Standards, and we prefer to follow Indian standards wherever it's possible. Even in the case of DLMS COSEM, we have this kind of a liaison because of which we are able to adapt uh, DLMS COSEM for Indian requirements and actually produce an Indian standard with which we can uh, use DLMS COSEM. So it's not surprising that uh, the US is going with their own uh, standard. There is this perception that the IEC is uh, a little bit more aligned to Europe. Uh, that's not really the case because it truly is a worldwide body. I know there are several experts from the United States who are members of the technical committees of IEC and they contribute a lot to that. So I think it is not because of this perception of IEC being foreign, but it's because they have their own body and they have their own standard which is kind of competitive with DLMS person and that is the reason.
Okay, CPRI was instrumental in first uh, bringing this technology to India, the Central Power Research Institute. They invited some prominent experts, including the head of the DLMS UA, to come to India and they conducted, CPRI conducted a number of workshops in which they acquainted the Indian industry with this protocol standard, this new protocol standard at that time and its features and the benefits. Now that was about acquainting us but as a standard to come to India there was only one specific route that we can follow. The Bureau of Indian Standards is the Indian SDO, the Standards Development Organization and the BIS has a liaison with the IEC. So even though the DLMS UA maintains the standard because it is integrated and liaison with the IEC and the IEC has a liaison with BIS this gave us the opportunity to bring these standards under their IEC namesakes to India and BIS is the body that does that. Being a liaison with IEC, being the national uh, liaison for India for the IEC, BIS can host what we call as a mirror committees. For each technical committee in IEC, we can have a mirror committee in India and under the mirror committee we can adopt those standards and we can also adapt them, which is this something that we have done. The BIS has published uh, Indian Companion Specification which is something that can be used in conjunction with the base standards to provide a very specific India specific implementation and this was released as an Indian standard IS15959. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the objectives that DRMS COSM tries to meet, that's a moving target. Technologies are changing all the time, the demands are changing all the time, the requirements that the metering industry is placing on, uh, on this technology is also increasing all the time. So DLMS COSM has a standard process, they have got a task team that meets regularly and analyzes all the requirements, distills them and comes up with contributions which get reviewed and finally get integrated into the standards and one by one all the gaps are getting addressed as we speak. Uh, I think some of the exciting things that are going to happen now is the inclusion of what we call the push standard. Uh, the push standard is something where, which allows DLMS, a DLMS device like a meter to push data to the central system automatically. Apart from push, some of the other features uh, is mainly related to the carrier technologies. There are a lot of carrier technologies coming out now, radio uh, frequency, RF mesh technologies, power line carrier technologies, there is a huge amount of research and development going in these fields and DLMS COSM's ability to support these as intuitive data link layers or carrier layers would be the next uh, big thing coming up which is uh, what I am looking for. I think DLMS COSM is definitely here to stay. Uh, as a company, we have been working with DLMS. Calcitech has been working offering DLMS solutions, stacks and other offerings for quite a few years now and we are continuing to invest in this. We are seeing a lot of demand from new countries which have started uh, naming DLMS as a national standard. For example, recently Japan has come up with a requirement that uh, most of the utilities will now shift to DLMS person. And this is not just one or two, but a significant number of countries that are adopting DLMS COSM. So we are involved in those efforts and uh, I think we are definitely in it for the uh, long haul. So as far as DLMS COSM is concerned, I think it's here to stay.